Germany is led by a woman. As is the European Union. Germany's Green Party is also led by a woman. Some women have made it to the very top, but they remain the exception. Most don't get that far. There are committees, sadly, with no women. The world of German politics remains a male domain. At national, regional and local level, women experience prejudice and discrimination. Some people said I was only elected as I was so pretty on the billboards. It's more aggressive. There's more sexual harassment. In 2021, women politicians are still in the minority. Men do it better. Why? Men are more realistic. The proportion of women in the German parliament has dropped. Germany ranks only 48th globally. Why is that? Elisa Diekmann became mayor of Coesfeld last November. The 34-year-old is the first woman, the youngest person, and the first non-CDU member to become mayor of the western German town. Diekmann ran on an independent ticket and got more than 66% of the vote. That was no foregone conclusion. Diekmann faced considerable skepticism when she stood for office. What things were said about you in the campaign? People kept on saying, isn't she too young? She could be my granddaughter. Does she have any leadership experience? Why did she have children if she was to take on that kind of job? A lot of misgivings, often of a very personal nature. Some people said, I was only elected as I was so pretty on the billboards. I asked myself, my election billboard has my face on it. I have never seen anyone presenting themselves differently on an election billboard. It's self-promotion if I do it. If a man does it, it's quite normal. Diekmann is separated from her husband. She has an au pair to help look after her two young children. Diekmann's private life was brought up in the election campaign. The CDU made her separation public. They were trying to make out that I was not capable of carrying out this job. They were implying that if I can't make a success of my relationship, how can I run a town? Diekmann responded by openly addressing the issue on Facebook. As there has been some speculation in the CDU, I briefly once more want to make a private matter more transparent. My husband Marcus and I split up over a year ago. Diekmann had considered everything carefully, with an apartment near the town hall so she could see her children at lunchtime, and by seldom holding meetings in the late afternoon. But a woman mayor with small children proved controversial. For me, it is important whether I am qualified and that I get results. It didn't occur to me that how I managed that with my private life would play a role. Das war für mich einfach nicht präsent, dass das eine Rolle spielt. The fact that Diekmann is both young and a woman doesn't play much of a role now, except when there is conflict. Today we're going to look at the site. We saw the plans the last time in the town hall. She's visiting a farmer with the building authority officials. It was clear that she has a challenging job, but I think that she has risen to that challenge. Diekmann has settled into her job as mayor, but getting such posts in the first place is still difficult for women. Women remain unrepresented in all areas of German politics. Currently, there are 14 male state premiers and only two female premiers. 
The proportion of women sitting in regional assemblies is roughly 30%. Only 9% of mayors are women. And German parties have far more male members than female ones. Isabel Radgeib would like to get into the Regional Assembly of Baden-Württemberg. The 40-year-old member of the center-right Christian Democrats has three children. This is her out campaigning back in March. The proportion of women in politics is particularly low in the southwestern German state. Do you get the feeling that you are fighting against antiquated structures? There are committees, sadly, with no women. Sometimes it takes time to get used to the introduction of another style of politics. Isabel Radgeib joined the CDU in 2019. She was first a member of their women's organization. In Baden-Württemberg, you can only get a seat in the state assembly if you get a direct mandate. But women have a harder time getting selected for them. Isabel Radgeib first had to beat a man. I remember a conversation at a market. Someone said, why do we need more women politicians here? Interesting, as women hold only 26% of seats in the Baden-Württemberg Assembly. So more, yes, certainly. But I did sense fear. I'm not sure where it comes from. That fear seems to come from the rather traditional image of women that many older men still seem to hold here. What about women politicians? Men do it better. Why? Men are more realistic. They have other things on their minds. What do you mean, other things? What do I know? Not politics, maybe. More men have been in politics since ancient times, haven't they? Men have a certain culture, competitive culture, a traditional way to defend their turf. And part of that is viewing women as intruders. That makes Isabel Radgeib angry. She has seen how that undermines the confidence of a lot of women. And women also experience practical obstacles. The meetings mostly begin at 7 or 7.30 in the evening. That often clashes with dinner time. Of course, when the children go to bed, you need someone, especially when the children are small, who's there for the family. Direct candidate Isabel Radgeib stood in a constituency where the CDU didn't have a strong chance of winning, and she lost. The difficulty in combining politics and family life, that's an obstacle for many women. But is that the only problem? Why is it so hard for women to get into political office? It's a question that we want to discuss with law professor Zilka Laskowski. She has long been concerned with the low proportion of women in politics. Our entire party system is tailored to men and a man's world. It's nothing to do with the behavior of individual women. They are not too stupid, too slow, and also not too fearful to go into politics. It is internal structures that are hindering women. Women make up 51% of the population. Can't men represent women? Why do we need more women politicians? We need this half in the German parliament to ensure equitable laws as a result. Topics that particularly affect women, such as pay discrimination, for example, are getting neglected. You also talk about structural discrimination. What do you mean by that? It is linked to the nomination procedures within the parties. They determine whether women have a chance of getting nominated and then elected. Let's look more closely at the German electoral system. In general elections, people get two votes. 
With your first vote, you choose who you want to represent your constituency in Parliament. Almost 70% of direct mandates went to men in Germany's last election. Your second vote goes to a party. The parties put forward a list of candidates for each German state. If the selection meeting is attended mainly by men, then it is not a baseless assumption that this meeting will also mainly select men rather than a woman. Through our socialization, of course, it's quite credible that we might have the idea that men are more assertive and are more likely to win the seat, because people think men are stronger than women. That means that men are seen as the norm in politics. And that has ramifications. We're visiting a ministry where there are traditionally few women. Michel Munterfering is a Minister of State in the Foreign Ministry. In the history of the Federal Republic of Germany, there have been more top civil servants named Hans than there have been women. Munterfering takes us to a place where the male dominance becomes evident. This is the portrait gallery of the past post holders. I think that this is a good example that shows how far we have to go as far as the representation of women in senior positions is concerned. Munterfering has also made a conscious decision to put a woman in charge of her office. And Munterfering is also patron of the Women's Association in the Foreign Ministry. She believes in networking. We cannot allow men to discuss everything among themselves and then inform women. That's so often the case in politics, and that's exactly why we need this network. Symbols are important too. In the Foreign Ministry, there are dozens of conference rooms. Michel Munterfering shows us the Hildegard Hambrecher Chamber. The first rooms were named after women only in this legislative period. This is the second one to be called after a woman. The first was named after Eleanor von Puttkammer, a great diplomat. So it's about symbols too. It's important that we also raise women's visibility. The most visible sign would be a woman foreign minister. That would be a first in Germany. Women in top political positions, Angela Merkel is one of the few exceptions. Merkel has, however, very rarely talked publicly about her role as the first woman chancellor in Germany. And during her time in office, little has changed in terms of the proportion of women lawmakers in parliament. Is the chancellor herself a role model? No one laughs these days when a young girl says she wants to become a minister or even chancellor one day. Some people even ask whether a man should be allowed to become chancellor. Another woman is hoping to become chancellor in September's election. The Greens have selected Annalena Baerbock to run as its top candidate rather than her co-leader Robert Habeck. Of course, the issue of emancipation played a central role in this decision. Young, a woman, and a mother. That's unusual. Is she up to the top job? Baerbock gets asked this question, and it seems normal. But do men get asked questions like this? We meet Tobias Hans, state premier of Saarland. The 43-year-old was elected three years ago and became the father of twins a few months later. At the start of this year, he and his wife had a third child. How often are you asked how you cope with your job and family life? Amazingly often. When my twins were born, for instance. But, of course, it's asked in a different context. With women, there's always the subtext, how can you manage to be a good mother despite your job? I don't get that kind of feeling. And that isn't okay. What do you think about the debate around Annalena Baerbock's nomination as the Greens' lead candidate? 
Fundamentally, I think it's good that women, younger women too, that mothers run for the country's most important political office. And of course, mothers can hold top political jobs. And the reverse as well. If a woman doesn't have children, she gets asked these questions too. Then people tend to ask, how can a woman who is not a mother be chancellor? Men, some don't have any children, would be much less likely to be asked that. That's completely unacceptable. Tobias Hahn says women in politics are called into question more often than men, and he wants to support women in a targeted way. But he says the introduction of a quota in the CDU remains problematic. It would be easy for men like me who are party leaders in their state to say that the jobs of those below them should be shared out 50-50. But we have people in our party, men, who work hard and do good work. I can't simply take away their posts. And a mainstream party like the CDU wouldn't back that approach. We have to set a process in motion that will find support. The Christian Democrats have postponed the introduction of a quota. As CDU party leader, Annegret kramp karnbauer was unable to get the measure adopted, even though she has been pushing for a quota for years. Why didn't it work out in the end? We had a very fundamental debate about a quota. Is it necessary? There were a lot of people, including a lot of younger people, who said, we do not need a quota. And then, of course, there is always the debate about when it would be introduced. What will it mean, for instance, for our members? Will they lose out? A less binding quota to help more women conservatives into party office was introduced a quarter of a century ago. It's often ignored, but it helped launch kramp karrenbauers career. You say yourself that you benefited from a quota. In what way? The first time I got onto a list for election to the German parliament was because during a meeting, they suddenly had to find someone to stand and it had to be a woman. It gave me a break. And if you look at how the system in a mainstream party like the CDU operates, everything works according to quotas. People make sure there are people from different faiths, employees and entrepreneurs from different places. That's never a problem except when women are concerned. The women at the very top give a misleading impression. The proportion of women in parliament is dropping. In the previous legislative period, 36.5% of parliamentarians were women. Now it's just 31.4%. And the situation varies widely between parties. In the Greens and the Left Party, women are in the majority. In the SPD, it's 42%. These parties have high binding quotas. In the FDP, the CDU, its sister party, the CSU, and the AFD, the proportion of women is significantly lower. In Berlin, we are meeting Helga Lukashat. The political scientist is currently working on a study about women in politics. We have discovered that women in politics face completely different expectations than men. Often double standards are applied when it comes to their achievements, they're more closely scrutinized. What role do threats and verbal abuse play? Sadly, far too big a one. It's increasingly via social media and the prevailing tone there. Often their female identity is targeted, their sexuality called into question, really nasty abuse. Women are exposed to hate more than men. They frequently receive rape threats. It can lead to women not speaking up as much. Some young women also said that they are not prepared to put themselves through it, to be abused on social media. Claudia Roth has also experienced this hate. She has been vice president of the Bundestag since 2013. And she says she has noticed there are fewer women in parliament. Since the far-right AFD won seats there, women lawmakers' day-to-day -day experiences have changed significantly. So now I will move to agenda point two, 
our question hour about parliamentary paper number 19. How do you find the climate towards women in parliament? It has completely changed. It's more aggressive. There's more sexual harassment. The experiences that women are subjected to in Parliament starts with what happens when they walk to the podium. They are looked up and down. It's a wonder that there's not any catcalling. And then there are some rather lewd remarks. You can use that word. Sexism is very prevalent. A new climate in Parliament and a new perspective. To be honest, I got the feeling from some male parliamentarians that they heaved a sigh of relief after it became clear that Angela Merkel was not standing again, at last men again, that they felt that things were returning to the natural order. The green politician was a feminist pioneer. Now she sees the influence of women in parliament disappearing. She is convinced the quota is necessary. In this power battle, women need rules that enable them in the first place to show what they can do. That's the quota for women. It's nothing more than a key, a means to an end, a key that opens the door. Women then have to go in and show that they can certainly do it. That argument is not shared by all women. Corinna Herold is an AFD representative in the State Assembly in the eastern German state of Thuringia. Today she's out and about with her mobile constituency office in Erfurt. Do you get the impression that women should get more involved? If yes, why? And why do you think they don't? The AFD's representatives in the Assembly comprise 15 men and three women. Herold opposes a quota. Why are you against a quota? Whoever needs a quota, and I'm not just referring to women here. Either they are unsuited to the work because of stupidity or laziness, or they're clearly too unsightly for a career path with charm and wit and feminine qualities. Are you serious? That's my opinion in the vernacular, yes. But maybe a quota could initially redress. No, we won't go there. We are either all free and equal or not. Our constitution says all people are equal before the law, so I don't need a quota. It will just ruin in the long term the reputation of those who benefit from the quota. We have quotas for allotment holders, for anglers, for people with one leg, for people who can't hear. I don't want to be described as a quota, quota woman, unquote. But how can we then increase the number of female politicians? The 59-year-old says it's up to women to take the initiative. Do men and women have the same opportunities? Yes. Yes. Women just have to seize them. I have spoken to women at many events and tried to persuade them to get involved. But often other interests are predominant. Family, their work, leisure activities, yoga courses, making pottery. It just doesn't get much resonance. One of the women who seized her chance is Linda Teutoberg. She was secretary general of the FDP for more than a year, until party leader Christian Lindner had her squeezed out of office in 2020. At her send-off at the party conference, he made a sexist joke. I think back fondly on the fact, Linda, that we began the day together about 300 times in the last 15 months. I'm referring to our daily phone call about the political situation, not what you are thinking. What do you think about the send-off that Christian Lindner gave you at the 2020 party conference? Christian Lindner has apologized, and so for me that particular matter is closed. But I do, however, think it's important for people to be sensitized to the issue of what stereotypes and role allocations women are confronted with. We need this debate. 
The liberal free market FDP has the reputation of being a male party. The number of women in senior leadership has dropped again recently. What makes it so difficult for women to get to the top? If women say, I'm going to run, that's often seen as overambitious and not recognized as the normal behavior of an adult, and so okay for women too. Ice princess is one of the labels that critics use if women assert themselves. Women are often reproached for behavior that's regarded as positive for men. Despite her personal experience, Linda Teutelberg is against any quotas for women. She believes in voluntary target agreements in typically liberal fashion. But can they really help? The example of France shows that a quota can help to increase the number of women in politics. Two decades ago, the country introduced an electoral law on gender parity. The legislation means parties can be fined if they do not field lists of candidates that contain equal numbers of men and women. Under this law, the proportion of women in the French National Assembly has more than tripled to nearly 40 percent. In Berlin's state assembly, we meet Anna Helm. She leads the left party in the assembly. The 34-year-old believes that state action is required. She says the situation in the Berlin State Assembly shows the need for a parity law. Anna Helm and her party in the State Assembly want to push through such a law. And even though parity laws in Thuringia and Brandenburg have already been overturned by Germany's constitutional court, Helm does not regard that as an obstacle. The courts have already determined that it is, in principle, possible to restrict other rights in favor of gender equality, like electoral laws, for example. It's a question of weighing things up. It's not the case that parity laws are fundamentally unconstitutional. In the Berlin State Assembly, 52 percent are women, the result of a quota. Helm says this quota remains important. We still need this quota, in my party too. It's often the case that women are more reserved when it comes to competing and men are a bit better at scouting out opportunities. That's why it's still necessary to have instruments that consciously work to counteract this tendency. Women politicians remain in the minority in Germany due to competing responsibilities, the lack of role models, and systemic bias. Quotas, even temporary ones, could change that. As could men who are willing to make way for more women politicians.